Hello, this is Suma, Technology Manager at uh, Center for Nanoscience and Engineering in the Characterization Facility. So today we are going to learn about uh, most advanced ion microscopes, uh, which is a focused ion beam. So it's a dual column system which combines both the electron beam as well as ion beam. So we are going to see uh, in depth about this tool capabilities and applications. So we are going to start uh, loading this sample. Uh, this is the standard sample uh, used in the focused ion beam tool. So which has um, silicon, copper, gold and many more uh, standards. Uh, now let us load this sample into the FIB chamber. So this is the vacuum uh, page window. Uh, so here you can see uh, there are two uh, differential pumping systems. This is the chamber vacuum and this is the column vacuum. Since there are two columns, it's a dual column system which has ion gun as well as the electron gun. So first we will load the si sample by venting the chamber. Okay, so let's vent the chamber now. So the chamber is now in the transition state. So once it vents completely, so the chamber will be in atmosphere and we'll be able to load the sample. Now the chamber is in the vented state. We will open the vacuum chamber and load this standard sample. So this is a stage uh, which has five axes, X, Y, Z, uh, rotation and the tilt axis. So I am going to load the sample into the stage holder. Now after fixing the sample onto the stage holder, we will have to pump the chamber. Today we are going to look at the overview of the dual column system uh, which is a focused ion beam. So we have many advanced microscopes like transmission electron microscope, scanning electron microscope and the focused ion beam uh, on the dual beam system. So today we are going to uh, learn thoroughly on the dual beam systems. So dual beam system is a combination of SEM and the FIB. So it's combination of the electron column as well as the ion column. So this is a schematic of a ion beam, this is a schematic of the electron beam, so which is the SEM and the FIB. So what FIB can do in comparison with the SEM, so we use electron microscopes for the top surface morphology, but in comparison with the SEM, FIB can give you the subsurface information as well. So since ions are heavier than electrons, it can remove the material which is actually termed as milling. So FIB can also add material which is called as an in situ deposition, metal deposition. So we can also prepare samples in situ for TEM analysis with the help of the manipulator. So since it's a dual beam system, it has a SEM column, it can combine high magnification imaging with the sample modification. So what are the applications of FIB? FIB is very widely used in the materials and the semiconductor industries. So the main application of this focused ion beam is subsurface deformation studies in the material science, the TM lamella preparation for materials as well as devices. So circuit editor device modification, you can actually modify your devices by milling or depositing material and ion beam lithography, you can actually write patterns, write any structure using the ion beam. So let's look at the schematic of a dual beam system. So it is a combination of two beam system which is the electron column at 0 degree and the ion column is located at an angle of 52 degree. So this is, um, so uh, the dual beam, dual beam system has a combination of SEM and FIB with an angle of 0 degree with respect to the 52 degree angle. And this is the cross section of a source which, in, which is mainly used in the focused ion beam. So in focused ion beam we use a liquid metal ion source which is basically a gallium because of its very low melting point. So let's look at the cross section diagram of a liquid metal ion source. So we have a reservoir of gallium which is heated to certain temperature and then we have a tungsten tip attached to the reservoir of gallium. Then we have two coils which is a suppressor and extractor coils. So when you heat up the gallium reservoir, all the gallium atoms will flow through the tungsten tip and it forms a point source. So there are two coils which is which helps you in maintaining the voltage and current of the emission, ion emission. 
So we have extractor coils which can help you pull the ions from the tungsten tip and we have suppressor coils which can actually suppress the voltage to maintain an emission of 2.2 microampere. Once the ion beam is formed, it will pass through a set of apertures which in turn defines your beam dia. Once the beam dia is defined, the primary ions will start scanning your sample and gives you an image on the monitor. So the next module is the ion beam induced deposition which is termed as a gas injection system. We have three precursor gases which is platinum, tungsten and carbon which is useful in in situ deposition. The basic principle of the gas injection system is, so we have the ion beam of which is the main source is the gallium which is actually scanning your sample surface and we have for example, let us take an example of platinum beam. So we have platinum precursor with a one single platinum atom surrounded by many organic atoms attached to it. So when this platinum beam interacts with the ion beam, the ion beam interacts some 30 kV energy to the platinum beam and the platinum atom gets deposited on the sample surface and all the volatile compounds will leave the surface. So this way we, we deposit layer by layer of platinum on the sample surface. So the next module is the TM sample preparation. So there are different steps of TM sample preparation. Let us go through each step. So when you prepare a sample for a TM, we make a very thin slice which is in the order of less than 100 nanometer. So to, to make a lamella for TM, we need to protect the region of interest. So the first step would be platinum coating. So in situ we do a deposition of platinum, very thin layer of platinum coating as a protective layer for the region of interest. Once the platinum is deposited, we create trenches around this deposition area which is actually termed as milling, okay. So this is actually termed as a cross section. The next step would be we have a in situ manipulator, single manipulator which helps you or which aids you or which guides you in the sample preparation. So we get the probe very close to the sample where the cut has been made and we term this process as lift off. We are going to weld this sample to the lamella with the probe with the help of the platinum. So we are going to lift off this lamella and this lamella will be finally attached to the grid. So this is a TM grid. This is called as a half moon grid which has different slots in it. So the zoomed in image of this one slot is given here. So once the thin slice is lifted off, we are going to weld it on the grid. So you can see the thin slice is welded on the grid. Once the thin slice is welded on the grid, the thickness will be in the order of 1 micron. So we need to reduce the thickness to less than 100 nanometer with the help of the ion beam. Once you make the thin slice of less than 100 nanometer, the same grid will be taken for the TM analysis. So the in situ deposition milling lift off is termed as a TM lamella preparation procedure. So now let us look at the uh, experiments, the FIB. So we have loaded the sample into the vacuum chamber. Now if you can see the chamber has sufficient vacuum to operate. So let's choose the holder first. So we will choose height adjustable multipurpose specimen holder. So the next step is we need to capture the navigation picture. So let's go to the stage option. Take the photo of the current image in the chamber. So the sample will, stage will move to a specific location to capture the photograph. The current image has been captured here. So we can see the sample which is loaded, which is inside the chamber now. Now this is, this quadrant is for the camera where we can see different components here. So whenever we move the stage, we keep the navigation camera on. So there are totally four quadrants, one is for the camera, one is for the navigation image, 
one is for the electron image that is the ICM image, the next quadrant is for the ion image. The quadrant which is blue is active. So, since it is a dual column system, first we will start with the ICM imaging. So, in the system option, we have two options like wake up and sleep. So, if you give wake up, both the emission and the beam will start both in the SEM as well as the FIB column. So, let us give wake up. Now, the high tension is on. See, look, beam is on at 5 kV. So, we will start with the imaging. So, let us zoom out the image to locate the sample. So, I am going to double click on this, the saved image to go to a specific sample. So, you can see the cursor is moving to the position. Now, I have one sample here, I am going to focus it. If you want to move to a different location, then just double click. So, you can just navigate inside the camera using this option. So, I will choose a silicon sample here. Okay. These are the silicon crosses. I am just moving the sample to a specific location. Now, I am trying to magnify the image. Okay. So, if I have to align this, what I do is go to the stage, align feature. I am going to align this feature. Now, I start focusing the image for better resolution. Now, whatever you see on this screen is the SEM image. So, if you would like to save the stage position, go to the navigation window, add the stage position, just name it as A, update. So, if you are lost this position, you can actually restore by double click on this. So, once the image is focused, we can use this SCM for the purpose of imaging. So, there is a concept called eucentric height that is defining your sample height to the working distance of the microscope. So, after proper focus at high, very high magnifications, we need to link the sample height. This is the option link sample z to the working distance. Click on this and then change the z value to 4.1. So, the 4.1 is a eucentric point or it is called as a coincident point where your electron and the ion beam image meet. Now, if you see the stage has moved to the 4 mm, 4.1 mm which is a eucentric point. So, I will again focus the image, correct the astigmatism and go back to 4.1. Now, the sample stage is free to move in the z position since we have already coupled the working distance. Now, I like to capture some images using the electron beam. Okay. So, we will just click F2 for a very slow scan image better resolution image. So, if you see the image is getting scanned at a very slow scan rate, the image quality is also improved. So, I can now capture this image and save this. So, I am now live imaging the sample. Now, if I have to perform any milling or deposition op, uh, options, then we will have to tilt the stage to 52 degree. So, this is the tilting angle to tilt the stage to 52 degree to use the ion beam. Keeping this eucentric point at the center of the focus, we will change this to 4.1 again and then tilt 
to 52 degree in steps of 5 degree. So, I am now tilting the stage to 5 degree. My reference has shifted. I will manually move the stage up or down to take it to the reference point. Now, I will go for higher angles, tilt angles. So, if you see the reference is shifting from the center, I will take the reference to the center cross by moving the manual Z moment. Then 45 degree, and then 52. So now my the stage is at 52 degree and it is normal to the iron beam. So now the image what is seen in SEM is cross section. So this is a cross section image. What you see here should be your top surface image. Now the iron beam is active. I am seeing the same reference here. So what you see here is the top surface image. The corresponding cross section image is here. Now both my images are linked and we are at the same reference point. This is a crosshair, this is a center crosshair. So for performing any milling or deposition operations, we will have to use the iron beam. Now I have started the iron beam with 30 kV and 26 pico ampere. So any high, higher currents will actually damage the sample surface. We will always start with a pico ampere current that is 26 pico ampere. Now, I choose the region of interest using SCM to avoid any damage to the sample. So, let us say this is my region of interest where I would like to perform some milling operations. The same image you can see in the ion. So, this is the ion image. So, now we will perform some milling operations. We will move to the patterning page. These are different patterns available. So, let me draw a few of them to explain. Rectangle pattern, line, we can make circular patterns. So, this is a cleaning cross section, regular cross section, polygon, it can be of any shape. You can load the bitmap file or the stream file. So, the rectangle pattern is generally used for making some contact pads using any of the precursor depositions. The line pattern can be used for making, uh, building a deposition or like you can make a cut. Circular patterns can be made through a circular hole or you can make a pillar structure by defining your inner and outer dia. Something like this, you can make pillar or a through hole. So the regular cross section is for the rough milling of trenches. The cleaning cross section is meant for cleaning the wall of the cross section. This uh, polygon can be of any shape. So, these are some of the patterns that can be defined manually for milling or deposition. So, first let us draw rectangle. Okay. So, we will first look at the milling operations. So, first draw a rectangle on the region of interest on the screen. Now, let us define the recipe. So, we have a standard silicon recipe which works for all the material. So, select silicon and define the dimensions. So, I am going to define x as 10, y as 5, and z as 2 micron. So, z is the depth of milling. So, this is my region of interest and I am going to select here. So, after selecting the pattern, you can actually see the total time taken for milling this dimension. So, it takes 3 hours 57 minutes since we are at very low currents. So, let us go to high currents. So, let us change it to 2.6 nano ampere. So, at very high currents it is subjected to damage. So, we will not keep the image live. Let us give auto contrast brightness and try to focus the image. Uh, 
this is my region where I would like to do milling. So, I am just keeping the selecting the region here. So, after changing the current the time taken is very less it just take 2 minutes 24 seconds. So, let us start this milling. Now, the milling has started and it is showing the overall progress and the current progress. Now, the advantage of having this ACM column is you can actually see the live milling. So, you can see the screen here which actually gives you the SEM image. So, you can see the live milling which is happening here. So, we can focus the image and look at the cross section how this is milling. Yeah, so the milling is happening here. So, the milling current is defined based on the material we etch or mill. So, typical currents which can be used is greater than 1.2 nano ampere, 1.2 nano ampere to 9.9 .9 nano ampere. So, you see the live milling happening here. So, the current progresses the remaining time is 1 minute 22 seconds. So, once the milling is done the first thing is go to lower currents in the ion beam that is 26 pico ampere and then clear all the patterns then switch to ion beam switch to electron beam sorry. So, you can try to focus get a better image for saving some of the photographs of your cross section. So, now I am trying to focus the image by correcting the astigmatism. Now, what you see here is a cross section image going to give a slow scan. So, you want to save the image with a slow scan. So, if you see this is the wall of the cross section. There is uh, so much of gallium getting implanted since we are doing at very high currents. We need to uh, clean this wall to get a better image or better uh, result, resolved image. So, for that we will perform the cleaning cross section for the same trench with slightly lower currents. We will switch to 1.2 nano ampere and pause. So, we are right at the location. We will choose cleaning cross section cleaning this wall. So, for the same depth we will clean this cross section wall. So, if you see here wall is getting cleaned. So, here this wall is getting cleaned. So, this takes just 30 seconds since we are just selected the line cleaning cross section at very high currents. So, this is very useful when you have a multi layer stack, if you have different layers you can actually measure the thickness of each layer. So, let us stop this. So, now the wall of this cross section has been cleaned at very low currents. Similarly, if we want to do some circular 
milling let us select the circle pattern just avoid this region now this defines your through hole let us make inner and outer dia with z1 micron this should give you a pillar structure so let us define this for a depth of 1 micron let us give a run so if you see here it makes a hole so this is where it is making a pillar this is a pillar structure for a defined depth so what we are seeing here is a cross section so you can make array of such pillars this is milling to the defined depth trying to focus the image here so you can see this area is getting milled and this part is retained so the defined structure is like this so this the patterned area will be milled and this the center will be re, uh, defined such that this will be retained and this area will be milled away this way you can define any depth required depth and you can make a through hole also if you don't define an inner dia it is a through hole if you define both outer and inner dia it's, it forms a pillar structure so you can see that this is going in depth okay let us stop this now this is how a milling or a patterning is done using any of these uh, patterns in the pattern controlling page. Now let us look at the gas injection system first let, you, let us reduce the current. So we will deposit a precursor here so I am choosing the region of interest now so I would like to make a contact pad let us say so I will select a rectangle pattern. Since we have used SI for silicon recipe for milling, we will use platinum DEP that is a recipe for deposition. So you can see the color matches with this precursor. Let us define the dimensions of this box. So I would like to deposit a platinum of 1 micron thick. So I will define these dimensions 2 cross 2 cross 1 and platinum or any precursor deposition is always done at very low currents. So let us define 41 pico ampere. So after defining this dimensions and the current, let us click on the check box. So once you click, once you select the precursor, you need to click the corresponding check box. So do you want to insert the gist needle? Yes. So before doing that, let us look at this camera. A needle is getting inserted very close to the sample surface. So all these precursors works at the eccentric point that is 4.1 mm. So let us click the check box you can observe that one of the needle comes very close to the surface. So this is the platinum precursor needle. Now this is at an eccentric height with respect to the stage or the sample. Now once you have inserted the platinum needle, the time taken is 2 minutes. So let us start the platinum deposition. Once you start the run, the flow automatically opens and then you should be able to your plat see your platinum getting deposited on the sample surface. So this is my platinum which is getting deposited on the sample surface. You can see for the thickness defined, it is actually de depositing layer by layer. So it takes 1 hour 53 seconds. 
So we can also make different patterns here, not just rectangle, we can also select circular patterns for making such kind of uh, deposition pads. So once your deposition is completed, first eject the needle. So your needle will be retracted from the chamber towards this parking position. Just retract the needle. Now the needle is retracted, we will reduce the beam current and then we can image using the electron beam. So you can look at the image which is captured in the ion beam. This is at an angle, this is a cross section image. So the same procedure is followed for any other precursors like carbon or tungsten. So if you would like to save this image, we can save it in the quick access, share data, just open up a folder. So if you wish to do some measurements on the top surface, so we will go back to 0 degree. The tilt, the stage is going back to the 0 degree tilt. Okay, now the stage is coming back to 0 degree. Okay, now we will try to image using this. So once you finish all the operations, so milling all the deposition operations, you need to take the stage back to 0 degree and then keep the beams off before you vent the chamber or exchange the samples, keep the beams off. So when you turn beams off, the electron beam and the ion beam images, the beams will go off. So once the beam is, beams went, uh, went off, you need to vent the chamber in the sample exchange window, open the sample exchange window and vent the chamber for sample unloading or exchanging the samples.